Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Today, uh, we have a really special guest. She has published more than 50 dog-related books and is an Amazon bestseller. Laura De La Cruz has been involved with dogs for 15 years, and um, her prim- primary focus is herding. But I will let her tell you more about herself and her work and afterwards why she's here and uh, what uh, we will all have to learn from her and from her experience. Laura? Hi, how are you? As everything's great out here in the middle of nowhere, New Mexico, I'm just saying. So it's a real honor to be on your podcast. Thank you for inviting me. So you want me to just kind of give you an update of who I am and where yeah, I'm coming totally. from? Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I, there was a time when I just had dogs and I actually wasn't a dog person. And I, I tell people that there's really three kinds of people, um, people who don't have dogs, um, people who have dogs, and people who are dog people. And dog people are the people who consider their dogs to be part of the family, their lives kind of revolve around their dogs just a little. And, and that's sort of how um, I live my life and, and how I ended up where I am actually um, about... 15 years ago, I got a Border Collie, and in the process of learning to work with this uh, high-drive dog, I got involved in herding and became a herding judge for the American Kennel Club and a herding judge for the American Herding Breed Association, and then moved out into the desert on five acres, and I have 20 sheep and 15 goats and 40 geese that we all work and practice and herd with, and we do herding trials here. And then I, I, I started writing a few books, but I did that after I got breast cancer three years ago. And when I was doing my recovery and doing my chemo and in bed, I ended up sitting in on a podcast uh, webinar training uh, that a gal did, the, the book ninja. Her name's uh, Christian Joy. She's really super smart and super talented. And she teaches you how to do these journals. So the next thing I knew, I was doing dog-related journals and started publishing and having a lot of fun doing that too. So here I am. I I teach full-time at the college in Las Cruces, New Mexico. So I commute about an hour each way and listen to podcasts on the way now. And um, as a result of that, and like you, I, I decided to start a podcast and I started that in January. And it's called the Leash Up Podcast. And it's for people whose dogs are part of the family. And, you know, they sit on the couch with you and eat popcorn and visit, you know, they're they're there with you, not chained up in the backyard somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think this is amazing. Um, I've had an an experience. I'm usually a cat person. Um, But uh, recently I had an experience with uh, um, the dog of, of a friend. And uh, she was so uh, like, so friendly and so loving, and I, I just fell in love with it. And it, mm-hmm. it was it was really an interesting experience. It it really changed my mind regarding dogs, and um, you you could feel her. You could uh, see the fact that she she's filled with love and that uh, she wants to be with you and she wants to be there and she wants to play and. I think this is this this is amazing, yeah. Well, and I think that dogs are the epitome of gratitude. They are grateful to everything you do for them. Anything and everything. They don't care what it is, they're just grateful. Cats, maybe not so much. And I have a couple of barn cats and you know, sure, they're grateful that I feed them, but I think mostly they think that they order me to feed them and then I, I thusly feed them. But they're grateful for the dogs that, that you know, are out there in the, the kennel building because one of them they love and they go sleep with him. But dogs are always grateful. I mean, they approach life from such a state of gratitude that it's hard not to love that. Yeah, totally, totally. They, they are like, for every single thing, they are so happy and they are, ooh. <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Exactly. I love true. that. I love that. Um, I know that in your experience with uh, with cancer, uh, gratitude has been very helpful. Do you want to um, say a few words about this? Sure. And and I think that um, everybody has their own story when it comes to cancer. So I don't 
think that, you know, mine is maybe that unique or, you know, or that different or that common. I don't know. I just know it's, it's my experience. And so I was extremely lucky in that I started menopause and I was having a lot of symptoms. So I went to the doctor and I said, I want some estrogen. And they said, great, but you need a mammogram first. And I went, yeah, sure, whatever. I've had those before. No big deal. Yeah, it was a big deal because I had two tumors that you couldn't even feel. They were like tiny, but we caught them early. So I, um, they immediately, you know, rushed me, you know, made me a, an appointment five hours away to see a surgeon. Um, we did the surgery. Um, I had a mastectomy and then I had to go back and have another surgery to, to double check my lymph nodes. And then I did some chemo. Um, and throughout that entire process, um, I learned that uh, if you are blessed with people in your life that will stay by you during those difficult times, um, you can really learn what gratitude is. I'm extremely grateful to the people who uh, went out of their way. Um, everybody from my, my nurse practitioner who um, was the one that uh, helped diagnose it, um, to my friends and my family that were showing up with food and taking care of animals. Um, I have a friend, uh, his name's Kyle. He lives four hours away, and when I, I told him what was going on, and he's 30 years younger than I am. He's a young guy. He's, got, he's working up north. He's got dogs. He's got family up there. Um, he called me back and said, um, when do you need me there, and how long do you need me? And I said, okay, could you come down for like five days and help take care of the dogs? He said, I'm, I'll be there. And he told me later that when he went to tell his parents, both his parents, and they're divorced, but both his parents said, just tell us how long you need. We've got everything up here covered. They didn't even know me, but they said, you do whatever you need to go help her and we've got this covered. So he came down and stayed for five days and took care of all the animals. Uh, my friend Joan, um, who lives about 30 minutes away, would stop by every morning on her way to work, feed and take care of animals. And then on her way back, stop and feed and take care of animals. She put in a lot of early, early mornings just coming over and helping out like that. And people who just give generously like that, you, you you can't help but be grateful because that level of kindness is, you know, just unbelievable. You know, it still, you know, makes me, I can understand how people could be that kind. Hmm. I think this is so, so beautiful. And it's in moments like these when we can't control everything and we can't do, do it all ourselves that we, uh, we need other people and uh, we see that they help us generously. We feel it's, yeah, we feel so blessed. It is. It is a blessing. And the other thing I think, um, and, and this is one of the things that I, I kind of knew going up to that, but this sort of reinforced the whole thing um, for me is um, I always found myself finding um, gratitude in the moment. So I would find myself stopping and going, you know, I'm really glad I'm alive. I'm really glad, you know, I'm very grateful for the things that I have. Uh, my life is wonderful. Even when I was sick, I was grateful. And so being able to catch those moments as they fly by, for me, was extremely helpful that, um, you know, I, I could say, this is why I'm grateful and that makes me feel better. So it's kind of like a, you know, wake up and be grateful, you know, think about it because it's right now in this moment, that's where the gratitude is. Totally, totally. So um, if you could uh, give a definition, a uh, personal definition of gratitude, what would that be? Uh, to me, gratitude is um, like a state of thankfulness, you know, in, in that, moment of almost clarity where you see just how blessed you are. And sometimes, like I said, it's just a moment that flies by and you're like, wow, I am really, this is great. I mean, I love my life and this is wonderful. Sometimes it's more obvious. Um, I tell people this story because, you know, it, it, I just think it's funny, but, um, you know, I, I live on a little ranch and so I do a lot of chores and things. And I said to somebody one day, and this happened a couple months ago, I really need a chainsaw. You know, I've got some trees that fell down. I need to cut them up. And so I need to ask somebody or find somebody who might have a chainsaw. I can borrow or buy a chainsaw. I need a chainsaw. 
And so about four days later, I was driving down a major road near my house and there was a chainsaw in the middle of the road. And wow. I, I, I literally, like, I was driving by and my head turned and I was like, is that a chainsaw in the middle of the road? So I pulled over and I looked back and I'm like, it is a chainsaw in the middle of the road. And cars are whizzing by and I'm going, there's a chainsaw. I get out in my dress clothes and I run across this, you know, busy road and I snatch up the little chainsaw and I put it in the back of my car and I'm going, seriously? Like, just, is it raining chainsaws? Where, <laughs> how, how random is that and how can you not be grateful to god or the universe or whoever who says oh did, i heard you needed a chainsaw so uh here <laughs> that's, awesome. <laughs> that's amazing i love it i love it so you you just need to to ask and it seems that <laughs> right i know my friends were like could you ask for a few things for me too and i'm you know, hoping it works that way but i do appreciate the the uh you know, the way the universe and the way God kind of works to remind you that, you know what, you, you really are indeed a blessed person. You are, and you should be thankful for that. You know, be grateful because things do tend to work the way they're supposed to work. Yeah, I, I think this is awesome because um, being a, a grateful person and uh, being open to receiving because you are grateful and you're not focusing on the lack of things, you you're focused on the blessings that you have and what you would like to have to, to solve different issues. Um, that just makes you open and it's, it's, it makes it easy for you to receive what, what you want, isn't it? It does. And I think once you recognize the good things, you start to see even more good things and then more things happen because you send it out and it comes back and it just sort of builds on itself. So that creates that positivity that brings back more positive into your life. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. You're a living ex example of that. that. That's really great. Um, I wanted to ask you, do you have a, a certain quote that you love about gratitude? You know, and I, I thought about that question um, and I really, the only thing I can think of, the first thing that popped into my head was wake up and be grateful because that's kind of the way I try to live my life now is to wake up and be grateful. You know, I, I tell everybody teasingly, every day is a birthday after chemo and it, you know, it, it is be grateful because you're up. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just wondering, this is uh, somehow out of the talk topic, but um, how is it for you like physically and emotionally to go through this experience, to do, go through cancer, through chemo? Um, I'm, I'm really curious for myself and for our listeners to, to have a perspective on their life and my life as well. It is, um, it's extremely overwhelming. You know, I, there there were days when I would I would literally wake up and go get up. You have to get up. You have to get up and get out of bed. You have animals to take care of. You have things that have to get done. Get up. Physically, you you feel so um, weak. I, I had a friend that said, it, it, uh, especially the chemo feels like um, you've been hit by a truck um, three times. The worst flu you've ever had and the worst hangover you've ever had all combined. And, wow. and that is true. I mean, like even your skin hurts. You feel like your cells hurt. Everything hurts. So just saying, get up, go, do, you know, and forcing yourself to, to you know, get moving and get out there, um, it's hard. It is super hard. Um, if, you, if you're lucky, you have people that are supporting you, though, and that makes it easier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can imagine, and it's usually when we have these kind of experience, experiences when it's really hard. To, I, I think that it wasn't very easy for you to be grateful when you were in so much pain, right? Um, it was hard, but you know what? I, I will tell you this too. A lot of times when this happens, it happens so fast that you almost don't have time to process it. You know, I... I um, I think I had my mammo in, what was it, August. And between August and September, I had um, an ultrasound, a bi uh, biopsy, and I was seeing the surgeon up in Albuquerque, um, all within about three weeks. And then we were scheduling the surgery two weeks later. 
it, and then as soon as the surgery was done, I was starting chemo. You, you almost have no time to even process it. So you're just kind of spinning as you're going. I mean, you, you don't remember much because it's just so overwhelming. Then afterwards, it all hits you. That's when you have time to process it. And, and you're just, you know, for a lot of people, that's when kind of the anxiety and the depression starts because you just realize what you went through. It's like a post-traumatic thing. And then you have to force yourself to, again, look at uh, the blessings, um, focus on the positive and, and be grateful for, you know, the fact that you're still alive. Yeah, totally. But um, what did you do in that period or what do you do generally to, to, to be grateful when it's hard to be grateful? One of the things, one of the habits I started um, during that time, and it, it sounds kind of weird, but it's um, helped me out a lot. Um, is when I wake up, because there were a lot of days when I woke up and I didn't want to get out of bed um, and I had to make myself. But when I wake up now, I take um, the alphabet and I go through the alphabet and with each letter, I come up with something that I'm grateful for. Wow. So, you know, A, um, antelopes. And, and I actually try to do a different thing every couple, you know, every day so that it forces me to think. B, I'm um, really grateful for the bees that, you know, we're having, they seem to be disappearing. A C, um, for coffee. A D, for um, dragons, if they existed. I'd be grateful for that too. So I try, I, I go through, that's 26 things, you know, if you're looking at the English alphabet, that you have to consciously think of what am I grateful for and go through them. It's not so, it's not that bad with the easy letters. I'll tell you with X, I, I do X-ray a lot. I'm just like grateful for the X-rays. Thank you. Um, but <laughs> the other letters aren't so bad. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine you, you really need to, to think about that. Uh, but isn't it hard like in the morning when you think about all the chores that you need to do to, to have this habit as well? How do you do it? Oh, I do it in bed when I, when I first wake up. So when I'm waking up, I'll, I'll, I'll sit there and wait for the sun to come up and I'll do that in my mind. And then I get up and start taking care of animals and taking care of dogs. And I go out and train and, you know, get ready for work and do things like that. Yeah, and that's beautiful. I think this is a great tip, gratitude seekers, to, to give yourself this time in the morning when you wake up to, to do this exercise and to, to start your day with a whole new energy. Yeah, it, 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 it's extremely helpful. I have to say you wake up you're, and you, if you do that, you're extremely positive for the day because you're just thinking, wow, it's a lot of things that are really good. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's like 27 things each day. It, you, you will, the, the beautiful thing about, about this is that it sets your mindset and you get to see other things as well because you search for them. Because in the morning when you woke up, you search for for the beautiful things and afterwards it's it becomes so natural to to just see the beautiful things yep yes I it does it. yeah i love it so um i'm guessing that uh I, i might be wrong but i'm guessing that you weren't this grateful all the time like uh, i don't know maybe 10 years or 20 years ago um Yeah, it was, you know, when I was growing up and, and like a lot of people, you know, I didn't have the the best childhood and life was in a you know, bed of roses and I struggled. And I um, was very angry for a long time um, until I, I realized I needed to get over that. Uh, so until I was probably in my 30s, I really didn't understand the value of gratitude. Um, and even then, I wasn't as um, proactive about it as I have been in the last few years. And, you know, I think that comes with age and wisdom. You know, you get older and you realize, you know, you've been pretty lucky. Things are pretty good. I mean, overall, life is great. Be grateful for that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I, can't, I can't say that uh, <laughs> with, uh, with time because I'm, I'm not very old. <laughs> But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think I think this is amazing. Uh, the fact that you got to have this experience of gratitude and actually uh, choose it, not uh, like just do it because you you should, because you actually right. live it and you actually feel it. And 
I think it, this is the, the most powerful way of doing gratitude. Thank you. Well, and, and I think like I told you before we started, you know, I'm, I'm super impressed with your concept of this podcast. When I saw this, I went, wow, this is genius because to be able to listen to episodes where people are talking about gratitude, you know, even if you're only listening to one a week, that's part of that building, like you said, that, that mind frame for a more positive outlook so that life will be easier. Because I will tell you that, you know, as somebody who's, who tried doing life as a, you know, angry, bitter person, um, it's a lot easier when you're happy and grateful than being, you know, in a bad mood all the time. So letting go of, you know, the negative and focusing on the positive is a much better way to live your life. So I think your podcast has the potential to really help a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I hope it will. And I, I think that it is already. Yeah, I know. I think it will. I think it's awesome. I think it's a great concept. So now you need to write, write a book. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm thinking about it, of course. Good. So um, what I wanted to ask you is like um, before you were 30 and you weren't that grateful, what would you tell your younger self about gratitude? Like what with the wisdom and knowledge that you have and the experience of life that you have now, what would you tell your younger Laura? Uh, well, the first thing I'd say is let it go. Um, it's not worth holding on to the negative and be proactive in finding the positive. That's going to make life much easier. That's great. That's great. I, I, I'm thinking the same way. And uh, for many, for many, it, it might be something that's, that might be like um, like fake somehow because uh, th they think that they should be happy naturally and they don't need to do anything about it if they have like uh, they do what other people expect them to do they should be happy and uh, in my experience at least if I don't choose it if I don't focus right. on it it doesn't happen right. oh yeah no I, I learned happiness is totally a choice it is a total choice. It does not happen by accident. You need to, uh, like I said, you need to be in that moment going, I'm happy with my life. And I get those moments regularly. Uh, you know, and I have since I changed away from the anger where you know, I'll, I'll just be doing something and all of a sudden I'll be thinking, yeah, I love my life. I have a great life. Somebody else might think it's not that awesome, but for me, it's perfect, but it helps that I'm doing what I love and, you know, and that I, I've worked to become a more positive person. Yeah, I, I think this is the way to, do, to go, actually. Yeah, no, I and agree. I, and I think that uh, having, having all the, uh, those dogs really helps. Like they are um, teaching you gratitude each, each day, I think. They are, yes, definitely. And then they break your heart and leave you because, you know, they can't live for forever. But yeah, yeah. There's, there's gratitude in that too. Um, you know, when you uh, lose a dog, it can be extremely hard. And I've lost three in the last, since I got cancer. So wow. it's been tough. It's been tough. But I'm so grateful they came into my life. But I think it's also a, a great reminder of the fact that we need to enjoy the moment the moments that we have and realize that it's not going to be forever. And this is all we have actually. Right. That's, that is exactly it. Yeah. Enjoy the moment. So um, do you want to mention a few people in your life that you are grateful for? I'm very grateful to my sister, Helen, um, both my daughters, Danielle and Rochelle. Um, and like I, I said, my friends, um, uh, Carrie, Joan, Kyle, uh, there's just been a whole bunch of people who have been there for me. I'm very grateful for my job, um, for having the opportunity to be able to write books and live where I want and do a podcast. Uh, my grandchildren in particular, Brooklyn and uh, Paul Anthony. Brooklyn and I are starting a podcast this summer. 
um, oh. on, on New Mexico. So it's going to be called Enchanted New Mexico. And her and I are going to travel around New Mexico and interview people in weird, wacky, fun places doing weird, wacky, fun things. She's 13. So we're going to have a lot of fun. And I'm very grateful to have that opportunity. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That should be yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love class. it. <laughs> Great project, great project. All right, so um, do you have a, a certain book that has helped you um, in your life, in your experience? Not really. I, you know, I think like you, uh, I probably have a thousand books on my Kindle and <laughs> um, I read books all the time. So uh, I go through a lot of books. Um, I, you know, I started listening to uh, Joel Osteen and a lot of people don't like him, but I'm going to say that what I do like is he talks a lot about gratitude. And so some of his books have been particularly helpful. Mm -hmm. um, my sister kind of gave me sh some of his CDs and I listened to them. And I, I like people who focus on uh, gratitude and positivity and, and that helps a lot. Totally, totally. Mm -hmm. And your books, what are your books about? Tell us a bit. Well, under my name, I write um, a lot of the uh, uh, Lee Shep's 101 Reasons I Love My Border Collie, Briard, whatever dog you have. And I'm, I'm working on more of those. Um, I also have written a couple of journals under a pen name, uh, Lana Dune, um, which is like the Cancer Gratitude Journal, because I really felt like one of the things you needed to do was start focusing on the things you were thankful for. So I do some health and wellness journals under that name, Lana Dune, uh, and you know, the panic attack journal, the, the migraine tracking journal, some of those health journals, um, just some mantras for uh, meditation, um, you know, thankfulness journals and gratitude journals that I've done under that pen name. Mm, that's wonderful. And uh, where can people find you? Where can people see your work? Uh, all of my books are up on Amazon and they can find them there. Um, they can go to the Leash Up podcast, uh, which is already being uh, produced, and they can tune into the Enchanted New Mexico podcast when we get that started in a few weeks. And um, we have, you know, I'm, I'm on Google, uh, on Gmail. And so if you want to reach out to me at leashupdogtraining.com, you can find me there too. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much for being here with us and for sharing all this wisdom. I loved having you on. Thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you for your kindness in having me as a guest, even though I did mess up the first time oh, no and problem. scheduled it at the wrong time. And so I was thinking, wow, what a sweetheart to just be so patient with his guests and so understanding of time differences and confusion. And that, by the way, is one of the after effects of chemo is sometimes things kind of get foggy and they call it chemo fog. And I still have that. So your kindness and, and uh, you know, generosity and being patient with me. I'm very grateful for it. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you.